Welcome back to the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today I have another magnificent leader for you. But before I go ahead and introduce the guest, make sure you subscribe to the channel, check out all the amazing previous content and the previous guests, and let me acknowledge our partners, our digital health platform, Clinitouch V, and our series partner, Fujifilm Healthcare. But today it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Anne Mond. Johnson, she is the CEO at the American Telemedicine Association. Anne, how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Nice to connect again. Thank you so much yes. for accepting the invite. I know we're talking before you all is really busy, so I appreciate your time. Absolutely, pleasure to be with you. I'm gonna go ahead with the questions. Today we are here to talk about telemedicine and telehealth. And the first question that I have for you is, what are the main benefits of telemedicine? So I think there are quite a few benefits, and we've certainly seen them play out in terms of the pandemic or during the course of the pandemic. The first is this whole notion of meeting people where they are. And so as Americans and people, quite frankly, around the world felt very concerned about whether or not they should go to the doctors or go to the hospital, um, what they were able to do using digital virtual telehealth tools was basically figure out a whether their symptoms were related to uh, covid and then b they were able to often access care and assess what they should do what their course of action might be so that couldn't have been delivered without telehealth so i think that's really the the key benefit is meeting people where they are i would say a second benefit is that people really had not experienced telehealth in great numbers before. And when they did, they found out that it was convenient, that it was easy to use, and that um, often they preferred it over in-person. So we've had this very regimented approach to practicing healthcare in the US, practicing medicine, where we're very focused on our brick and mortar and the idea that people have to go somewhere to get health. And that, of course, has gone by the wayside. I would say the third is that we found that with telehealth is that it's as good, if not better, than being face-to-face -face in many instances. So we've seen that in the case of telemental health services, where we've had such a significant shortage of clinicians who are able to help people. And in fact, the numbers of people who have mental health issues has only increased during the pandemic. And so this is a way of enabling us to scale responses that we weren't able to do before. So lots of benefits and quite frankly, very little downside. I would say the downsides, you know, um, we can get into it later, but the benefits far and away um, outweigh what we've seen otherwise. Oh, brilliant. And thank you so much for highlighting these amazing benefits. And I really like what you said about meeting people where they are, because usually, I mean, the traditional way is to go from a location to a location and, and receiving uh, care at the comfort of your home or your office or your uh, place is certainly the way for. And now we are seeing that up happening more often and, People are actually surprised how, it, how easy it is, isn't it? We have these preconceived it's crazy, barriers. Yeah. yeah, we have yeah. these preconceived barriers as human beings. Technology is difficult and it's complicated. And then we find out actually it's really easy, no? And you know, it's it's funny because I don't know if you remember, if you're old enough to remember when the internet first came out. And there was a lot of talk about how it was mainly used by men and that it was impossible for older people to get online. And that quickly went away. Those differences between gender, between age cohort, really evaporated very, very quickly. And so some of the old accusations about telehealth, that it's too hard for older people, that clearly wasn't the case. So we're, we're very pleased with how broadly it's been accepted. Fantastic. That's a very nice uh, comparison. That's a really nice, I like that. Thank you. And I'm going to move on to the second question. And the second question that I have for you is, what do you think needs to be done 
to improve the current telemedicine and telehealth standards? Well, I think there's a couple of things, and certainly that's one of several areas that we're focused on within the ATA. The guiding principle that we have in all of this is that telehealth is health. And so it is a modality of care that is selected by the clinician in coordination with the patient. And the idea that they should be able to freely choose that so that people can get care where and when they need it is really important. So I think the first is to accept the notion that telehealth is health. The second is that telehealth does not have different standards of care than in person. So you can establish a physician-patient relationship virtually just as you can in person. Um, there are you know, no reasons to think that telehealth uh, is different than any sort of in-person care, recognizing, of course, that there are many um, that there are many instances when in-person is better. So we're not saying it's a, the be-all or end-all, it's not a panacea, but it certainly is way more consistent with healthcare in general than, than some sort of sidebar issue. I think the other is that we're seeing on the legislative front in terms of the um, uh, policy arena that federal and state policy should um, really ensure that Clinic clinicians should be able to provide these services and there should not be geographic restrictions in place and that people should be able to receive high quality services, including in their home. So remote monitoring, which is a flavor of telehealth from our perspective, was certainly the, um, the, the poster child, if you will, of what happened during the pandemic. The fact that people were able they want to stay home and they were able to be safely treated at home and effectively treated at home. I think the other is that we have to continue to advocate for fair payment. We're not saying that um, we're in the business of dictating payment or fee schedules in the private market, but we do wanna make sure that we expand reimbursement so that we can incentivize 21st century care. We know that value-based programs are ones that telehealth really shines in. And then we wanna make sure that we have licensure that allows people to easily receive services no merit or where they are and that clinicians can safely practice medicine and not place undue administrative barriers or restrictions on clinicians. And so the whole notion of efficient life licensure that we saw during the public health emergency is maintained going forward. We're also very concerned that we have access and continue to have access to non-physician providers. Physical therapy is a great use case, um, nurse practitioners and others. And then we wanna make sure that underserved rural as well as urban communities, tribal nations and the un un uninsured at large should be able to equally benefit from telehealth and digital health services. So we have to, address and have reflected in state and federal health programs the disparities that we know existed well before the pandemic and that we've had much broader, much deeper national conversations about this now. And it's really not our only our opportunity, but it's our obligation to address this now. So it's not just broadband investment, it's a lot more. It's digital literacy, it's affordability of devices, of data programs, and so forth. Brilliant. Thank you so much. It's so much there to cover. I mean, the standards are really important, and you're doing a magnificent work in advocating this change. And the way I see it, and is healthcare is evolving really, really fast. New business models, technology, innovation, and the other things need to kind of uh, um, go in parallel with the same pace of change and the standards i see the standards going hand in hand with with the evolution so if very very important thank you the third and last question that i have for you is the ita supports a hybrid care delivery system can you tell us what that means and what role telehealth will play so this is the future of healthcare, and i think i said at the onset that Face-to-face -face is really important in some instances, 
virtual is very effective in others. And so the whole notion of hybrid is to make sure that our system of care uh, reflects the fact that we can do more with technology than we have in the past. Take remote monitoring, the fact that you have companies that are able to monitor patients, literally dozens and dozens of patients, that they can, uh, through the use of AI, they can actually identify when that patient might be going south, if you will, in terms of their condition before it actually happens. So this is virtual and this is a type, a, a modality that really is incredibly effective. Um, and then you also have situations where we have patients who call or send a picture of a skin rash and it's not clear whether they should come into the office. So we need to build in some of those protocols at the front end that enable staff to decide, oh, you should come in, you should don't have to come in. So it's really deciding how people are gonna get care in the most effective fashion. Recognizing that, you know, if all we do is use technology to replace a face-to-face -face visit, then we'll sold the whole thing short. We have to use technology, we have to use telehealth to reimagine how care is delivered, how health is delivered. And you're certainly doing that in your work with wearables, right? And so it's a huge opportunity and we're quite frankly busy defining that with lots of other folks and it's a very exciting time. Absolutely, and you mentioned remote uh, monitoring. I mean, diagnose disease early. Uh, monitor people remotely. Wearables gives that, kind, you know, I'm an advocate for wearables. I'm passionate about wearables. Wearables certainly is a very, the perfect combination with the technology to bring the data, monitor people and even disease management in certain uh, uh, areas. Yeah, and it's a fantastic conversation. We could have many, many more questions. We come to the end of the episode. I want to thank you for your amazing insights but before we go away and I wrap up I I finish all my episodes in a peculiar way it's not really a question as such okay it's called one minute of fame you can talk about anything the ITI any partners clients a personal achievements fam anything whatsoever to round up one minute of fame over to you <laughs> well this is the most exciting time in healthcare. And for me personally, I've been in healthcare my entire career, and it is truly an honor to represent over 400 organizations that are collaborative, that are innovative, that are really committed to the notion that everyone get care where and when they need it, and that when they do, they know it's safe, effective, and appropriate while enabling clinicians to do more good for more people. And further, it's been a great opportunity to collaborate with other groups around the globe, because what we found is that the problems and the challenges we have in the US are also present elsewhere. And so in face of a global pandemic, we have to have a global response. And so it's really, it's an honor truly to do that. Oh, brilliant. Fantastic. What a way to finish. And thank you so much. I want to thank you. Thank you. Again. I want to thank you again for coming on. I know you're very busy with lots of different things. Appreciate your magnificent insights. And th thank you so much for being in here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Brilliant. I'm going to round up now. Uh, to our viewers and listeners, make sure you subscribe again. Acknowledge our digital health platform, Clinitouch V, and our series partner, Fujifilm Healthcare. And I'm going to post Anna's um, uh, contact details here, LinkedIn and socials, connect with and reach out to the ATA, collaborate, and I'll see you all next week.